Hey everyone, I'm Drew from NWA3D and we're going to go over how to quickly add the NWA3D A31 in Cura 3.2 and this works in Cura 3.2 on both the Windows and the Mac and you can download Ultimaker Cura from Ultimaker's website or you can find it on your SD card. So if you plug your SD card into a computer uh, with the uh, SD card dongle when you open it up, you'll see uh, your user manual that walks you through step-by-step -step all these different things. You'll find STL file examples as well as test prints for your printer, but we're going to go into the Cura folder, and inside of here, you're going to find both settings of Cura for both Windows and Mac, and then also the Cura profiles right here, this Cura profile for the NWA 3D A31, and you're also going to see the settings, and this is everything that we're going to be setting up today too, in this screenshot right here, so those, all, those are all the settings that you can, you can use for reference to make sure that they're all set up right, and then also the complete settings are in this PDF document as well, so you can go through step by step and make sure everything is all set up, but we're going to load this profile and that has all the settings in it. So to do that, we're going to add a printer inside of Cura. So once you get Cura installed, the first thing that pops up is this Add Printer screen. And if it doesn't pop up, then you're going to go ahead and click where it says Settings, and then Printer, and Add Printer, and Add It. So we're going to go down to where it says Custom, and then we're going to type right here the NWA 3D A31. And if you want to name it something other than that, like Huge Printer, you can name it whatever you want. And then once you have it set, we're going to go ahead and say Add printer and we're going to set the sizes of it and then change a couple other small settings. So once this pops up with the setting screen we're going to change this width, depth, and height to be the size of our printer. So the width is going to be 300 and the depth is going to be 300 and the height that is going to be 400. So that is 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters which is about 12 inches by 12 inches by 16 inches tall. We're also going to check this heated bed because it has a heated bed, and then we're going to change this G-code flavor to RepRap to make sure that it prints correctly. Um, and then the last thing that we're going to change is we're going to go over here to Extruder and make sure that it's 1.75. So this compatible material diameter might be set to like 2.85 or 3, so we're going to make sure that we change this to 1.75. And then once it's all set up, and we have our printer settings all set up here with 300 by 300 by 400, and this RepRap right here, and the heated bed checked right there, then we're all set and ready to go. These settings we don't have to worry about. And then we'll go ahead and click finish. And then now that we have those settings set, we are going to load that profile. So to load the profile that I showed you on the SD card, we're going to click this little down chevron, and then go over here where it says manage profiles. And that's where we're going to get to the screen to load them. So we're going to click import to import these different files. And then we're going to navigate to our SD card. So I'm going to scroll down here in the finder and go to my SD card that's plugged into my computer and then go to Cura. And then right here, here is that Cura profile for the NWA 3D A31. So then now when we click open, it's going to open it and load it. Da -da -da, it's loaded. So we'll click OK. Awesome. And then we'll go ahead and click close. So then now we're going to make sure that our profile is selected. So we'll click this little chevron again and then go to the A31 printer profile. And these are all the medium settings that are all set for the A31. And we also want to make sure that our material is set to PLA. Uh, and that's polylactic acid, which is the biodegradable filament that's safe for the classroom. So we have this PLA right here, all set, ready to go. And then now we're ready to load our model to be able to print. So to load our model, we're going to click over here on this little file right here on this open file. And then we can go to navigate to our SD card or find any .stl or obj file that your students create. So we're going to go ahead and open up, how about uh, this keychain? On, uh, let's go to the A31 though, because that's the one that we have. So we'll go to the A31 and then go ahead and go to the STL files. And then I'm going to open up this vase right here. So this lofting sweeps and projection fades, I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And then once this is opened up and loaded, we can actually move it around. So this isn't a very good print orientation. So if you right click, you can kind of move around and drag and you can zoom in and out by using that scroll wheel too. And when you're zooming in and out, you can see this is going to have to print with a whole bunch of different supports and stuff that's down here. And if you click the solid view to layer view, you'll see all those different supports. So as soon as it gets done slicing, you'll see all these supports down here. And that is something that you don't necessarily need to print with. So print orientation becomes a big deal, especially for larger prints, to make them easier to be able to print. So as soon as it's get done, uh, it gets done slicing, we'll be able to see the different types of support materials that it's generated. And depending on the way that you move your model around, it might not need to have support. So when it gets done with slicing, we'll see right here, and it's processed, we'll see everything that is going to pop up. And you can also see our adjustments to where all of these things are now filled in. So that's a bunch of extra stuff that you don't really need, and you can see all that's in there. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to Solid View, 
And then I'm going to rotate this. So I'm going to click on my model, and then I'm going to go to rotate right here. And then I can rotate by either uh, resetting it if I move too much, or I can lay it flat to flatten it out. But I'm going to click on this red, red arrow right here, or this red circle, and then move it by dragging it around into the arrow into the direction that I want it to go. And then now that it's moved, now we've got it stood up and I can also click scale. So if I wanted to scale this to a different size, if I designed it on my program to be a certain amount of millimeters, I can adjust it right here. But if I didn't design it in millimeters and design it in inches, when I import it, it's going to be really, really tiny. So you want to make sure that all of your settings are in millimeters so it'll print out to that those exact dimensions when you get ready to print. But if I want to change this and maybe make it a little bit bigger, like maybe I can make it 150. And go ahead and hit enter on that one and make it even bigger. And as long as it's yellow, you'll be able to print. If you're not able to print, it's going to have these little lines that grow through it. And that means that it's unable to be able to print because it's outside of the build area. So when you click move, you can see that. So if I move this over here and move it to the outside, those little lines that are going through it, that means that it can't print. And you can also make sure that your Z is set to zero to make sure that your model itself is flat on the build plate. And once we have these rotated the way we want it, scaled the way we want it, and then moved the way we want it, it's going to slice. And that's what's done right down here. So this slicing might take a little bit. The larger the model is, the longer it's going to take to slice. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink it down a little bit, uh, just for the video so it's not so super long. I go into the scale, and we'll go ahead and move this down. How about to like 50%? Because you can do some really huge stuff on this printer. And if I move it to 50%, it'll, we'll see that when I press Enter, it'll make it a little bit smaller. So now it's real tiny. So it's going to be able to print out. And when it uh, when it's yellow and it gets all ready to slice right here, it says ready to slice, and now it's slicing right here. And when this gets loaded, we'll be ready to print. I can actually rename this too. How about vase? So now that I've got that renamed, press enter, and we're all set and ready to go. As soon as it gets sliced, we'll be ready to save it to our SD card. So this bar right here, that is the slicing bar. And when this fills all the way up, it's going to tell you how long it's going to take to print and then how much material it's going to use. So uh, as I said before, the longer models are going to take longer to slice. So this is going to take three hours and 21 minutes, which is totally fine. And you can click Save Your Removable Drive, and then when you do that, it saves directly to the SD card. But you can also click this little arrow here and say Save to File, and then you can click Save to File and save it wherever you want. So if I want to save it on my desktop to be able to edit the G code with a, a different program or a different lesson, I can save it right there to the desktop to be able to find it. And once you save it to your SD card by clicking this Save Your Removable Drive, you'll see that this button pops up that says eject right here and instead of having to go to the dock to eject it I can just click eject and when I click eject now it's going to be ready to print so it's ejected I can pull it out stick that in my A31 and then from the control screen in the A31 I'll go ahead and select my model to print it out so good luck 3D printing I hope this helped to kind of explain how to quickly set up the A31 inside of Ultimaker Cura 3.2 and have fun 3D printing and if you need any help then don't hesitate to contact us at nwa3d.com support. Have fun!